Lombok, September 20, 2018. It has been one and a half month since the terrible earthquake of August 5th struck the island, claimed 563 lives, and made half a million people homeless. I was driving up this hill in northwest Lombok. My, our mission was to bring water filters to this village, quite isolated. The people, the road was windy, um, windy and quite steep. Our car had to get back in first gear a couple of times. What I just saw was incredible. There is no house standing anymore. We saw only rubble, just bricks, bricks, rubble, metal bars, no house, like a war zone. Finally, after 45 minutes and the last bend, the village appeared. As soon as we got out of the car, People were very happy to see us, came and almost hugged us. No COVID time then. <laughs> um, yeah, it was a very isolated village, so people hadn't seen uh, other people for a long time. The, the wind was blowing very strongly and a lot of dust on top of this hill. We were just going uh, on the left-hand side, I saw a communal kitchen, and then I was asking the people, what has been your main issue? What, what happened uh, since the earthquake? Well, access to water, to clean water. And then, the terrible news struck. Two babies had just died from diarrhea. That night, back in my hotel room in the city in Mataram, I was still devastated. I couldn't sleep. I found myself crying, actually. And suddenly, it all made sense to me. All these questions I've been asking myself for so many years. How can I give back? How can I be of service? It just all made sense to me. Suddenly, I did the right thing. Well, this year's transitioning from corporate, or this month, transitioning from corporate world to social entrepreneurship. All these doubts, these fears, was just a process to go through. I realized that was the right thing to do. I'm not a doctor, but I save lives. Two weeks later, we went back up to that village to check on the kids and the babies, and they were fine. So water is life, and access to clean water is a human right. I'm privileged to be able to bring this beautiful gift to the communities here in Indonesia with my filtration systems. Right now, um, since the pandemic started, there is another disaster. It's more like an economic disaster. A lot of people have lost jobs. So when uh, the pandemic struck a couple of months ago, I was just wondering, what can I do to, to help the communities in need, or what would be the, the thing to do? And there were filters where the answer once more. Because with them, you just save uh, money. You don't need to buy water, and you can also basically, or don't need to boil it, you're just, just basically free. And in these difficult times, uh, every penny saved counts. So I decided to launch a fundraiser uh, end of April, early May, a couple of months ago, uh, for the water filters. It's been quite successful. I raised about 30,000 plus dollars until now, which represent 1,500 units for 1,500 families. But yeah, that's all nice. But then <laughs> comes the most difficult part. It's the execution. So where to bring them? Who really needs them most on this beautiful island? So 
I believe in the power of collaboration. And together we are stronger. So I reached out and I'm, I've worked since the last four months with about 20 different organizations, which are mainly supplying food or um, seeds to grow vegetables or some people who provide land plots. And together we bring food or the seeds and the water filters so for people can save money and uh, basically don't have to buy water. I have been to places that I've never imagined would exist on this island, to, um, let's say, houses and dwellings that I thought, how can that exist? People were actually a little bit shy to show their places. So it's not, it's a lot of places, our visas are, for sure, it's also in, in Bali, in the west of Bali, but also in the, in the city, in Denpasar, and uh, people from not, not only Balinese people, but also people from Java, from Sumba, from Timor, which uh, have uh, jobs where they have all lost also income due to COVID, like, for instance, uh, waste pickers, um, street food vendors, um, just drivers also, and drivers. So um, these people uh, have all been through, through this, and now, um, the other day, we uh, actually it was yeah one and a half week ago. I went to Denpasar to Padang Sembian uh, together with the Crisis Kitchen, which is one of his organizations I work with. And um, this lady was there. This old lady was there sitting, and so I sat next to her and I started to ask her how she was doing. And she was yeah like ask, was having a smile and saying, "Oh, thank you for bringing some food and water, so we can go through a couple of more weeks." And then she. What she said struck me like, she said, you know, I had a, f a stroke four years ago. I don't want to depend on my son the whole time. I have no friends. Thank you for being my friend. And I was like, wow. So then I realized that small acts of kindness can really change people's lives. I hope my story inspired you, and I'm just asking you to do a bit more of small acts of kindness every day. You never know what it means to people. Thank you.